Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dr. Aaron Explains the Universe. Now, there's kind of a big movie that's coming out this month, Star Wars The Last Jedi, so I wanted to do some episodes on Star Wars. Now, there's not going to be any spoilers for Last Jedi, so don't worry about that. We're going to be talking about the science and the science uh, in Star Wars. And because I love talking about faster than light travel and artificial gravity, that's kind of my background, that's kind of my jam, um, I'm going to talk about the hyperdrive in Star Wars first. So if you haven't seen my videos on space time, um, faster than light travel or tachyons, you can go watch them now or watch them afterwards if you have more questions. I'm going to be kind of assuming some of that knowledge as we go forward, throwing out some of these terms. So just a fair warning. Um, now we love Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I love Star Wars deeply so much. Oh, it's amazing. Um, but you know, sometimes the science is a, is a little, uh, and you've probably heard me rag on it before, but, um, just because when I try to look things up, like how they do artificial gravity or how they travel faster than light, the answer is <coughs> we travel faster than light. <laughs> we have artificial gravity. So you don't get a ton of like the science that they're coming up behind it. But I've sat down and I tried to work through some of these questions and I think I've come up with something that I'm pretty okay with, just given um, stuff that's in the canon and the legends. Um, so I hope that you are happy with what I've come up with. Um, but as always, if I've missed something, feel free to throw me questions. We're all here just to have fun and geek out about Star Wars. So when we uh, punch it and go into hyperdrive, um, what is happening? So I started with the fact that we call it the hyperdrive. That's what you're engaging when you go to warp speed. Um, now you're in a galaxy far, far away galaxy about 120,000 light years in diameter, which means it takes light 120,000 years to travel from one side to the other. So you want to break that you want to travel faster than light in order to have any sort of exploration of the galaxy happening. And you know, we see this all the time. People drop in and out of this warp speed, um, using their hyperdrives. So in my other faster than light travel videos, I tend to talk about three different ways that you can travel faster than light. Um, with star Wars, I think it works a little bit differently. The way that I like to think about it is, um, you engage the hyperdrive and basically what happens is you go into hyperspace. So I started with the hyperdrive thing and say, okay, well, what is hyperspace? So if you remember from my space time video, we talk about space time as a sheet. It's a four dimensional sheet of distance and time. And this is kind of what dictates everything we know in the physics of our own universe. And if you want to travel faster than light, you have to break that somehow. You have to bend it somehow. And, um, we talk about hyperspace is sometimes referred to as what's above the sheet or what's below the sheet. So you have your sheet of space time or your trampoline. And if you have this sort of nebulous space above it, that's outside our universe and we call it hyperspace. So if you have a hyperdrive, what would happen is that you could kind of almost punch your way through and create an artificial path that goes from one point to another kind of at the end, it would look like a wormhole or these gates that we've talked about before. So I'm going to go off of that concept. Now I kind of visualize it that you have your sheet, you're all happy here in your ship and you want to travel to this point over here. So what you do is you engage the hyperdrive and you start to punch out into hyperspace and make almost an arcing pattern that shortcuts whatever that long trip would be otherwise. Now, obviously the way I'm doing it here, this makes it look longer than this, but imagination, this would be a shorter trip. Um, so yeah, sorry. You got to just punch through one, one spot to another. Now, how would you do that? Well, when you look in the star Wars canon, they actually talk about super light hypermatter particles is the way that they phrase it. Sounds like techno babble. Let's break it down. Super light, faster than light. So above light, super light hypermatter. Okay. Some sort of weird matter particles. So they're engaging super light hypermatter particles in order to go faster than light in the hyperdrive. All right. So when I think of super light particles, I immediately think of tachyons. If you remember from my other videos, um, all matter bends space time. It dips space time. Tachyons do the inverse. So they always travel faster than light because they bend space time up in the opposite direction and coast on it. Like you're surfing a wave. Um, so if you're talking about super light hypermatter particles, my brain immediately went to tachyons. Lo and behold, thank you to Wikipedia and all the Star Wars resources out there. Um, they actually define the super light hypermatter particles as tachyonic particles. Success. All right. So we've got 
sort of tachyon particles that are being utilized to go into hyperspace. So you're happy here in your ship in the Millennium Falcon and you want to go into hyperspace, you engage the hyperdrive, what happens is, is you start to bend space time up like this and then you punch through. Punch through. And then you can go through hyperspace and take a shorter path to go from one point to the other in your galaxy far, far away. There is some other techno babble that's thrown around when we talk about engaging the hyperdrive, which works. Um, they talk about needing some gamma radiation in order to uh, use energy manipulation. And we've seen this in other sci-fi before where you talk about harnessing energy because E equals MC squared. So if you want to mess with bending space time, you can use energy to do that. So that works. They also talk about a four axial stabilizer. Um, no context behind this whatsoever, but I'm kind of happy with that because when you talk about four axis, um, we talk about four dimensional space time. So it kind of goes one to the other. Um, so I'm okay with that one as well. So again, you engage the hyperdrive, punch through, bend up space time, punch through, shortcut, almost build a wormhole as you're going. You can imagine it like a stream of a bubble that's being pulled in a direction and it goes and it touches on the other side. So what happens on the other side? Well, when you go back into space, basically you have this whole little path, this bubble that you've been traveling, that you've been dragging behind you. And then when you go back into normal space, that bubble will dissipate and you'll be dumped back into normal space. Um, you would assume that there's some sort of radiation, some sort of emission that happens when that happens. Sure enough, they talk about it. They refer to something that they call Cronau radiation. Now, as far as I know, this is kind of just made up, which is totally fine. And it radiates perpendicular to the axis of travel. I'm good with that. Energy needs to dissipate. Typically in space and science, we have all the axes kind of countermeasure each other out. You know, when you talk about axes of rotation, so you're rotating this way, you have an axis that goes this way. So, you know, it works. We're happy with that. So you have this sort of radiation that gets emitted when you enter back into normal space. And that's, it's been thrown out in other series um, in Star Wars as a way to detect ships, um, that you have this sort of residual Cronau radiation that comes from when you re-enter from hyperspace. So in terms of the technology that gets thrown around as well, we have hyperdrive motivators. Now the motivators are what we use to go into hyperspace. So that's when you engage the hyperdrive, you use the motivators to um, harness the particles and punch through and go into hyperspace. They also talk about inertial dampers. Now, Star Trek talks about this as well, and I love that they put this in there <laughs> because one of the things that you have to deal with when you travel at high speeds or when you engage into another dimension or anything like that, um, there's a physics concept that Newton kind of classified called inertia. If you may remember, inertia means an object at rest likes to stay at rest and an object that keeps moving likes to keep moving. So this is why when you're sitting in your car and you shout out, punch it, Chewie, when you take off from a, a light, which I may or may not have done in my time, um, you can feel your body gets pulled back a little bit. And some of that has to do with just inertia, the fact that your body is happily at rest and now it's getting pulled forward, but it wants to stay at rest. So when you throw out the term inertial dampers or inertial dampeners, what that means is they're counteracting that sudden acceleration that the ship is going through. Um, Star Trek uses these as well, like I said. And it's just to say, okay, your body isn't basically gonna turn to muck as your ship accelerates faster than the speed of light due to inertia. It's gonna carry you around, it's gonna dampen this inertial field that's gonna make your body okay with the sudden acceleration. So we have our hyperdrive motivators, we have our inertial dampeners, I'm actually okay with all this. We have our super light hypermatter particles that are helping us go faster than light to punch through into hyperspace. Um, I think we've got it. I think that this kind of works in terms of a method of faster than light travel. Um, I had a blast thinking about all this. I know people have come up with other theories, other ways to explain it because there's not much sort of technical canon that explains it, but I hope my explanation made sense to you. I'm certainly happy with it. I hope you all have an amazing Star Wars celebration month whenever you get to see the new movie. Um, I hope you enjoy it and uh, come back for more for the next few weeks. We'll do some more Star Wars themed Dr. Aaron Explains the Universe and uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and may the force be with you.